The Story of Injured Cold. Hello everyone, I'm Jimmy, and this is Phil, and welcome to Spooky Appalachia. This week we are going to look into a tale that has fascinated folks for decades, and that is the story of Injured Cold of Lan Lanalos Lanalos. Our first story occurred on a rainy Wednesday night on November 2nd, 1966. A salesman named Woodrow Derenberger was driving home to Mineral Wells, West Virginia from Marietta, Ohio. At around 7.25 p.m., Woodrow claims that on the intersection of 77 and Route 47, he spotted a strange dark gray craft about 30 to 35 feet long and hovering about 10 inches above the ground. It passed him, then swerved in front of him, blocking his path, and forced him to stop. The craft had no windows or lights on it. It was charcoal-colored and glistened when hit by Woodrow's headlights. Soon after landing, a figure looking like a normal human male stepped out of a door of the craft. He had dark, combed-back hair, deeply tanned skin, and looked to be around 35 to 40 years of age. He wore a blue zippered overcoat made of a shiny reflective material with a dark blue button shared underneath and navy colored pants. The man approached Woodrow's right side and spoke to him telepathically, asking him to roll down his window. He did so, and the craft reportedly lifted off and covered about 50 feet in the air. At this point, the man smiled politely and crossed his arms, then asked him many questions telepathically while maintaining his smile and standing in the rain. Woodruff said that the man asked him many questions, such as who he was and where he lived. Woodruff said that he felt frightened, but the man said not to be afraid. The man told Woodrow that his name was Cold and seemed to want to know more about the human race. He later revealed that he was from the planet Lanulos in the galaxy of Ganymede. After their conversation, the craft landed and Cole walked back to it. Before entering the door, Cole informed Woodrow that he would visit him again, and he did, many times over the years. Woodrow even wrote a book about his experiences, Visitors from Lanulos. It was in a later visit that Cole let Woodrow know that his full name was Indrid Cole. Our second possible sighting occurred in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, around the same time as the first sighting. The Lilly family had been reporting poltergeist activity in their home. They had also been seeing diamond-shaped lights in the skies at night over their home. One night, their daughter Linda woke from sleeping to a man standing over her. This is what Linda had to say about the encounter. It was a man, a big man, very broad. I couldn't see his face very well but I could see that he was grinning at me. He walked around the bed and stood right over me. I screamed again and hid under the covers. When I was looking again, he was gone. In early November of 1966, an elderly man reported similar sightings to the first uh, to Mary Hire's newspaper office in Point Pleasant. He claimed he and another workman were driving home to Point Pleasant from their job site in Marietta, Ohio. When they got near Parkersburg, West Virginia on Interstate 77, an elongated object appeared in the sky and descended directly in front of them, forcing them to stop their car. Soon after, a normal looking man emerged from the craft. The man driving the car rolled down his window in disbelief and the strange man approached them. He wore a black jacket and kept a smile on his face with his arms crossed, hands hidden under his armpits, just like Woodrow reported. The stranger asked who they were, where they were from, where they were going, and what time it was. He then strolled back to the dark cylinder, and it rose quickly into the chill, drizzling sky. Overall, these stories are pretty interesting. They, uh, they, were, they were, all three were around the same time as uh, the uh, Mothman sightings, the UFO sightings, and uh, the Men in Black that were popping up all over the place in uh, that area. So that was another thing going on. Yeah. Then. 
Yeah, the, the what was in the water in Point Pleasant in the sixties? <laughs> like, well, uh, you know, it could have been something from the TNT area. Right, uh-huh. right. I still think that's just duckweed. I think the the Expedition X people were were playing that yeah. up. They can't tell without sampling it, but it looked just like normal, normal. Yeah, we went. And I think I told you about that. It seemed okay. Yeah, you did. Dong. So, what are your thoughts? That's great. So it seems like a. I don't know, like the it's 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 a nice nice contrast to the the usual little green men UFO story, like the uh it's almost like a men in black type deal. Yeah. The movie, I guess not the uh not the, the point pleasant thing. But um Yeah, that's right. So like most of the connection between this and Mothman was just like dramatization for the novel though, right? Like there wasn't Actually they played much. it up more in the uh, Mothman Prophecies movie, they made it seem movie, like not the novel was uh, Mothman, and um, yeah. really there were. I don't remember anything connecting them <clears throat> in the actual cases, other than the location. Yeah, yeah, that that was kind of what I had heard, but and yeah, the the stories made it made it seem like that. Yeah, that's 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 cool. I, yeah. Um, and then yeah, also another all. interesting thing, uh, Indrid uh, apparently continued to visit the uh, Dinenberger family. Woodrow uh, wrote a book about all of his adventures with Indrid Cold. Uh, we mentioned it earlier, the Visitors from Landalos uh, book. And uh, I read something recently, very recently, that uh, Woodrow's daughter... It still to this day is getting visits from injured cold was that the the visitors from Lanulos book was that the one where the guy was like oh like he like actually abducted him and they went on um yep. adventures around yep. the galaxy together okay okay that's the one i was thinking of exactly yeah exactly it cool well i wish he would come visit me <laughs> yeah right be good to catch your eye yeah no joke Well, folks, uh, remember, if you have a story you'd like to uh, see get featured on uh, Spooky Appalachia, you can email us at webmaster at spookyappalachia.com. As you can see, we've changed up the format a little bit for these stories, so uh, let us know if you like it, okay? And uh, thank you to our Patreons, Alvin, Charles, Josh, uh, (laughs) Jeff, Josh, Julia, Shannon and Taylor. Also, big thanks to Appalachian Oddity for the help with this one. And thank you to everyone who tuned in.